No shield beam, Warlock. Nice. Nice job. Yeah. Okay, Power repair. Right. Full ammo. I'm body blocking you. Thank you. Nice. So that's got it. In dark. That means they're spawning. Okay, that was the waggy shit. Push, push, push. Yep, that's what I was doing. I'm not being sarcastic in the slightest when I say that this hand cannon is one of the best in Destiny 2. But uh, before you click away from the video because you disagree with me, I created a nice little infographic that shows why some people like this gun and others hate its guts. Also, before you get offended at this infographic, know that later in the video I'm going to show you hand cannon drop off distances of all the popular hand cannons versus each other and what that would look like versus let's just say 450 RPM auto rifles. So even if you feel like you're a really confident player and you hit the majority of your shots but you still hate this hand cannon, that's fine. That's your opinion. But you're not going to argue with the facts that are coming in this video. So to describe this infographic very easily, there's a garbage can on the left and angel wings on the right. So if you agree with more statements on the left, you probably think this gun is garbage. But if you agree with more statements on the right, you could probably see that this gun's one of the most powerful hand cannons in the game. But because this archetype of hand cannon is so punishing, even if you find yourself somewhere in the middle, you still might think the gun is garbage. Now you might have noticed a new chart on your screen. This is the hand cannon damage drop off chart. And we got this through painstakingly going into private lobbies. And by private lobbies, I mean we matched two teams of four, so eight people in my Discord server. And then we counted down, matched each other in competitive survival, and then took a Darcy to measure meters, and then shot each other in the head with hand cannons for like two and a half hours. Seriously. And then we also charted all the numbers down. Long story short, this chart gives light to the fact that the Kremil's dagger punches way out of its weight class and range. Which means that on some of the more popular maps and some of the lanes on the maps where people like to shoot scouts and pulses at each other, this hand cannon can actually hang because it can 4-tap instead of 5-tap, which means popping in and out of cover, you have the same time to kill, or effective time to kill, as a Mida multi-tool. But Cammy, Mida Urials is OP! Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 For those of you who haven't seen the gun yet, let's go over the perks. Kremil's Dagger has a perk called Opening Shot, which gives improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of attack. Not 100% sure what it means, but I can explain to you what at least the range portion of Opening Shot means. This hand cannon normally hits 71 to the head. When it starts experiencing drop off, Opening Shot works to add an invisible plus 5 to the range drop off. Let me give you an example to clear that up. For argument's sake, let's say we're 40 meters away from a target. We shoot them with Kremil's Dagger. It hits opening shot, so that means we did 54 damage. You shoot another shot immediately. This shot does not have the opening shot bonus and hits 49 damage. You see, 54 and 49, it's a 5 difference. The cooldown on the opening shot is pretty generous. It only takes a couple seconds for the perk to return. And if you use another hand cannon in the energy slot like the Allegro, which also has opening shot, you can shoot with the Kremils, switch to the Allegro, shoot, then switch back to the Kremils and have opening shot on all three bullets. Now until private matches are a thing and make my job a lot easier, I'm not going to tell you exactly what opening shot does, but I do feel like it helps with controller users and even jump shotting. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Whenever I jump shot with the opening shot, it feels like it hits more often. Now I'm not going to go into private matches and waste hours of my friend's time jumping and shooting a hundred times just to compare the difference. But in my experience, which was a lot of Iron Banner games, I felt like opening shot did something. And I even plugged in my controller just to, you know, 
showed the naysayers in my comment section that the Kremil's dagger can still be used with the controller, because it most certainly can. And uh, my friend Drewski mains a controller, and he's confirmed for me that Kremil's dagger feels good even when you use a controller. So to quickly list out the pros and cons of a controller, if you're a gunslinger, you get aim assist on your throwing knives, which combo very well with the 110 archetype. You also get aim assist in general. With the high range stat on the Kremil's dagger, you are definitely going to feel very, very sticky as you hover over targets. That sounded a lot better in my head. Hopefully I don't get demonetized. But yeah, the true power of the Kremil's dagger happens when you plug in the keyboard and mouse. Back on subject, the other perk, armor piercing rounds, over penetrates targets. I'm definitely getting demonetized. Drop mag means that you reload quicker but you waste ammo, and there are three side options, and only one of them significantly boosts range, so use that one. Like I said, I did the testing. If this hand cannon already punches out of its weight class and range, you want it to definitely punch out of its weight class and range. Sure, on some maps like Endless Veil, vale, you can get away with using the sights with less range, but at that point, why not just use a different hand cannon like the Privena D, which has hip fire, Home for the Lost, which has quick draw, or Sturm, which gets bonus damage when you get an energy weapon kill. I also recommend that you use exotic armor to boost this hand cannon's effectiveness even further. If you're on a warlock, the Ophidian aspects boost weapon handling speed and reloading, which are two major flaws of this hand cannon. Affinian Aspects also translates to your energy weapon and power weapon, which means that you can combo sniper rifle body shot cleanups with the hand cannon and a high impact sniper. If you didn't want to use Affidian Aspects, Transversive Steps are a great option because sliding really helps your mobility with the hand cannon. But if you find yourself on a hunter, don't worry because Lucky Pants also give quick draw to this weapon, though the reload speed you kind of got to deal with yourself. But then again, you're on a hunter and probably playing Gunslinger, so that means that you could just Marksman dodge and reload automatically. The Titan really doesn't have much for exotic armor, but because it's a Titan, it gets to reach 10 resilience a little bit easier, which means that you'll most likely win most of your duels. Speaking of winning duels, the time to kill of the 110 archetype of hand cannons is 1.07 seconds. Yes, this means that it kills faster than Uriel's gift. You can put away the torches and pitchforks. But anyway, the gameplay in the background is against very, very competent players, so I feel like it shows a true value of what this gun can offer in PvP. On your screen now you'll see a chart slowly fading into existence and what that tells you is that certain guns are effective at certain ranges, obviously. With this knowledge it helps us build really strong loadouts. It doesn't make sense to have two hand cannons, it doesn't make sense to have two submachine guns, or two sidearms, or two scout rifles. If you're gonna make a loadout, you want something that can touch most of your ranges. On most Destiny 2 maps you'll experience point blank range, that's where sidearms excel, Short range, that's where submachine guns and some hand cannons excel and some auto rifles excel. Then you get medium range, that's where hand cannons dominate, auto rifles dominate. Then you have medium long, that's where some auto rifles dominate, most pulse rifles dominate. And then you have very long range, which is where you'll see scout rifles. Logically, depending on the map, you want to build a loadout that touches as many ranges as possible, or whatever your preferred playstyle is. For the map in the background, Dead Cliffs, it has two very prominent long distance lanes, and the rest of it is all medium and short distance. So I of course geared up with the Cremilla's Dagger and the Hero's Burden, a medium range weapon and a close range weapon. This means that I'm lacking at long range. So. I shouldn't challenge long range, but sometimes you have to, and that's the benefit of having a hand cannon. Since a hand cannon does all of its damage in a single bullet, this means that when you peek out of cover, you can shoot them in the head with the hand cannon, a big burst of damage happens, and then you can go back and cover in safety. If they're using something like a Uriel's Gift, because everyone loves that gun, they're shooting a spray of bullets at you. You peek out, let's say two or three of the Uriel's Gift bullets hit you, but you also shoot them with the hand cannon and then you go back into cover. Your damage output is better than the Uriel's Gift, even if you experience some range drop off and they don't. But we can do even better than this. There's a stat called Mobility that you can spec into from one to 10. It makes a difference on your strafe speed. And here's the thing, if you can strafe faster, that's less Uriel's bullets that hit you when you go back to cover. But Cammy, recovery is the only important stat in Destiny. I know because other YouTubers told me this. Now I, I get it, I get it, I get that recovery is a good stat because you can get back in the fight. And that makes sense in respawn modes. But in countdown, like on the fortress, you don't get to respawn. So if they're in the respawn screen and I'm not, I'm living. Their recovery means nothing. I mean, look at this strafe. 
this shit is obnoxious. I'll slow it down for you. The idea behind a strafe is twofold. If I'm moving around, my opponent can't hit me, which means I have more health to immediately engage another opponent. Or alternatively, it means that I can engage two opponents at once and somehow come out on top. This is primarily the reason that I like the current time to kill right now, is because if you're a movement based player, you get the shit on people. And the best part is, unlike Destiny 1, you don't have to fear that a sticky grenade or a sniper rifle barrel up your ass is going to come out of nowhere. No, it's just gun skill. It's just gun skill. I don't see why Destiny 2 got so much hate, I'm sorry. I'm always on this tangent, but I guess what I'm getting at is I keep hearing this term power fantasy being brought up and saying, I want my guardian to feel powerful. And to me, this is my power fantasy right here. Out strafing people, out shooting people by merit of being better. Because I earned this shit. Even if I wasn't a YouTuber, I practiced this with intent, so I will get better. It's not like I turned on Pokemon for the first time and then just immediately walked up to the Elite Four because I wanted to feel powerful. No, I walked through the tall grass, got the shit scared out of me, got destroyed, sent back to the Pokemon Center, Nurse Joy looking ass telling me, Cammy, you're fucking garbage at Pokemon. And then I trained my Pokemon up to level 99 and one hit the fucking Elite Four, okay? But in Destiny, suddenly this concept is totally different. No, Cammy, I don't want gun skill, I don't want strafing, I want sticky grenades, I want power ammo all the damn time, because fuck you, Cammy, I don't want to strafe. And before I get Supreme Overlord hate in the comments section, let me go ahead and say on the record that I think Bungie's proposed changes are actually a pretty good compromise and a step in the right direction. Though I do think they can further separate the casual and competitive community by offering more fun game modes and more fun things for the casual player to do. And before you say, Cammy, this is way off subject. This is on a totally different tangent. I don't know where the hell we are right now. I clicked on a hand cannon video. Let me explain. I claim that this hand cannon is the best in Destiny. And for me to be able to say that it's the best in Destiny, I have to establish that you have to have a baseline degree of skill to make it that effective. But by sheer nature of doing so, the comment section is going to erupt in flames Krakatoa because god forbid this hand cannon does not come with a participation trophy. I'm fucking sorry. It doesn't. But if you do miss a shot, because most of us will, it's a one-way ticket to the respawn screen. But I don't see that as a problem, I see that as a challenge. Dust yourself off, hit more headshots, and get back at it. All this video is trying to do is show you the numbers and give you the tools that you need to succeed. And it's not going to be an automatic thing. You have to put in work if you want to hit headshots with this hand cannon, or you could just miss a golden gun shot like I just did in the background. Don't be that guy. And now, after that very long-winded tangent, we are finally back on subject. So we just talked about strafing. And strafing, pop in and out of cover, you hit them, try to make your damage output higher than theirs. A good mix-in with traditional strafing is sliding, believe it or not. And on mouse and keyboard, you can slide and quickly flick your mouse to deal with someone in a completely different direction while you're moving wherever you initially wanted to. When you get really adept at this, you can start stringing them together to really confuse your opponent and be almost impossible to hit. But of course, it's at the cost of playing like you're borderline going to cause a seizure because you're flicking all over the screen trying to reacquire your target. This is also a technique to overcome poor recoil direction when using a 110 hand cannon, but I gotta say that the Kremil's Dagger actually has a fantastic recoil direction, so if you are in a traditional 1v1 strafe duel, it's very predictable where your hand cannon's gonna bounce up and down, so you can hit your opponent. It's also worth mentioning that the hand cannons in the 110 archetype are considered aggressive frame, so that means they have an inherent high caliber. Or more specifically, in Destiny, the higher impact a weapon, the more flinch scales. So if you mix in being accurate with being evasive, there's a chance that your opponent may not even land a shot at you in the same skill bracket. As for Masterworks bonuses, I recommend Handling because, like I just said, if you're causing more flinch, having Handling means you scope in slightly faster, which means you're probably shooting them before they're shooting you, so the benefit is obvious, even if it is only by an increase of 5. Going for Stability doesn't do much because the Stability is abysmal. Going for 
Magazine doesn't do much because it doesn't change the amount of people you can kill in a single magazine. Though a case can certainly be made because this hand cannon more often than not will be a 4 tapper at extreme ranges or a 5 tapper at extreme ranges. As for reload speed, it sort of goes with what I said about mobility versus recovery and resilience and so forth, is that you should be hitting your shots, reload shouldn't matter as much. You can reload, you have plenty of time to reload when they're in the respawn screen. And that about wraps up this video, so for summary, Kremil's Dagger is not a hand cannon, it's a pocket sniper rifle, for lack of a better phrase. It competes with 450 autos, and even pulses on some maps where those would be the obvious favorable choice. The keys to success with this hand cannon are specking out an exotic armor piece to make up for its weaknesses, strafing, and hitting headshots. And most importantly, actually on second thought, why don't you tell me how to make this hand cannon work? You tell me how to use 110 hand cannons, all the tips in the comment section below. I want to turn a new page on this channel. I don't want to see a comment section full of people still play this game. Uh, D1 with a little greater than sign, D2, and all sorts of just nasty comments. Why not just help your fellow Destiny 2 player learn how to play this game a little bit better? So hit him up with your best tips for using a 110 hand cannon, specifically the Kremil's Dagger. Thank you guys.